My name is Professor Anthony Laysons and I'm the Dean of the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences, or as many of our students call it, the Arts Faculty. I know that many of you, along with your parents, might find yourself feeling indecisive about whether to head straight to university after school or to explore the world by taking a gap year. This is particularly true if you're not entirely sure whether the degree you've chosen to pursue is the one for you. The best way to determine what you should do next is by considering a few advantages and disadvantages. One advantage is that the earlier you start, the earlier you will finish. Perhaps you want to enter the job market as soon as possible. There may also be some unforeseen twists and turns in your studies, which could lengthen your time at university. Another advantage is that you will be entering university life with some of your friends from school and you'll be following the same timeline as they are. Also, when you're younger, you have fewer responsibilities. But having said that, the age at which people settle down, cement relationships and have children has increased significantly to their late 20s and early 30s even. A disadvantage could be that by the time you've finished high school, you've been a learner for some 12 years and you haven't really experienced enough of the real world to understand and make an informed decision about what to study. Taking some time out allows you to explore that world by traveling, working, or even doing some volunteer work. Time off between high school and university can be used to improve your academic skills and your sense of responsibility before going into this new, different and challenging environment of university academics. Finally, doing some part-time or full-time work allows you to save up for university, which is an expensive investment, particularly if you're self-funded. That is the route I took many years ago. The arts and social sciences focus on creativity, collaboration, and interpersonal and intercultural communication skills, as well as ethical considerations related to the advances in artificial intelligence which place the humanities at the forefront of what we call an education of the new soft skills knowledge worker in the cultural, the creative, the service and the digital industries. This is the human interface, which we think is crucial for innovation and our understanding of the great challenges of our time, such as changing identities, different cultural norms and understandings, social movements, democracy, and inequality, not to mention the socio-economic consequences of the pandemic and rapid technological change. I know that with all of the above said that you may still have some questions, in particular with regards to what to expect when you arrive at campus while we're living in the middle of a pandemic. There is no denying that the world as we've known it has been completely changed. And the same is true for our faculty and the university at large. But what does this mean for university students? At present, we offer lectures and assessments via augmented remote teaching, learning and assessment or ARTLA. We can think of this as a hybrid model of teaching with approximately at this time 250 students allowed into a lecture hall for in-person classes, assessments and so on, with the rest of the students attending the same class simultaneously online. However, the actual number in face-to-face -face teaching will depend on social distancing requirements and the size of the venue. 
So for a 250 presence, we would need a 500 venue capacity in order to implement social distancing. All our classes are recorded to allow students to listen to lectures again or to ensure that students who have missed the lecture can catch up on work missed. We also ensure that we do have in-person classes with the usual COVID-19 safety protocols firmly in place. All students need to be masked up. We have sanitizing stations that are provided at all venue doors and we implement social distancing of at least 1.5 meters. For those who may have questions about the medium of language used when we teach, do assessments and communicate with students, here's some basic facts you need to know about how the language policy is implemented at our faculty. The faculty strongly supports multilingualism. The limits of our language often translate into the limits of how we view the world. All our undergraduate modules, except in the language departments, are offered in dual medium. This means that our course outlines, visual material, assignments and assessments are made available in English and Afrikaans and where we have the resources in Isikosa. Interpretation services have unfortunately been constrained by the pandemic and the challenge of online delivery. Lectures are presented mainly in English, but with introductions and summations offered in Afrikaans. I hope you'll continue on this journey with us as we dive into the number of degrees you can pursue in our faculty. Hi everybody, now you have met our Dean and later on you will meet all our program coordinators but I am Fiona van Kerwel and I'm going to tell you more about the undergraduate programs within the Faculty of Arts and Social Science and just to greet you, this is my colleague Janine. Hello everyone, my name is Janine Wallow and I'm also involved in the University of Stellenbosch's WOW project and I'm going to do the tour with you, with Fiona. So let's start. Uh, a quick hello that we already did. Um, then we're going to tell you about the undergraduate programs, which are well known by you because you have had some offers. And then we're just going to touch on the basic requirements. We're going to tell you about all the degree programs, the general ones, as well as the selection programs. And then, of course, we're going to end off and you will be able to know where you can find us. So let's kick off just to familiarize you a little. Um, on the screen, we will have all our undergraduate programs. You will see there are the general programs. There are the specific programs that you can uh, within specific uh, degree programs within the social sciences and then of course we've got our specialized programs within arts drama and visual arts drama and music and um, so let's kick off janine you want to touch them uh, based on the basic in in requirements by now you've all met the basic uh, requirements very important, it doesn't secure your place at the University of Stellenbosch, so just make sure that you still meet the requirements after you have written the, your NSC exams. Good luck, everyone. So let's kick off. The general degree programs are a BA in Humanities and a BA in Language and Culture. They are called general degree programs because you can make a wide variety of choice. And because you have such a variety of choice of subjects, that means you can also play around within the fields wherever you'd like to go in the postgraduate program or which career you would like to choose. Um, with the, in the humanities, it's endless. It all depends on your um, on your choice, that, that your interests, of course, and of course your abilities. In language and culture, it's a, it's a little more specific within languages and cultural uh, studies, and m mostly uh, careers like um, journalism, in the media, teaching, translation, or even within the government. 
Um, our specialized programs, we're going to kick off with a BA in social work. And this is a degree that actually prepares you for a professional, as a professional social worker. And you also get registered at the South African Council for Social Services Professions at the, that board. So the moment that you leave the university, you will already have your professional qualification. Um, please note, uh, Make, just make sure that Janine mentioned the basic requirements. Make sure that you meet them again. It will be on all the slides in red so that it's just a reminder. And then we're going to move on to our development and environment. This is a very nice degree, especially for those who are so interested in our environment. And isn't this a real thing going on with all climate changes and development? All those issues, this degree will help you um, to interact with the natural environment through processes of economic and socio-economic development in order for you to make sure that we can ensure a future for your children. A BA in International Studies is the one that excites everybody because in this degree you will have the the you have the world at your feet. Um, you're going to learn foreign languages. You make a choice. It's either Mandarin, German or French. And you will do political science. But your English needs to be very good. So please take note. If you're in a home language, it's got to be 50% or more. If it's a first additional language, 60% or more. And then we're going to go to our BA in PPE. A very, very... Um, nice degree very popular degree it's a ba in politics in philosophy and in economics and remember if you do the economics you will need a 50 a 60 percent in maths so this degree is like an investigation within what's going on in the world in and also within our south african context so if you ever think about management or investigating journalism law or even in the the, the, the diplomatic service or in government that's the one you've got to do that one um, a BA in data science this one focus on solutions to solve big data problems and you know we live in a virtual world in virtual space with a lot of data issues so that one is a very very interesting degree but please look at the admission requirements maths 80% because you will need to figure out a lot of things uh, and also look at your languages. A BA in human resource management is a degree that we do um, uh, in conjunction with the Faculty of Economic and Management Science. This prepares you for a degree within the world of industrial psychology. In other words, you will be a human resource practitioner wherever you'd like to go. And remember, maths 60% if you're going to do statistics. Then we have a BA in law. This is a selection program and we do this um, with the faculty of law. And this program lies the foundation for advanced legal studies because after BA law, you can do your postgraduate LLB and that will also enable you to practice law wherever or however you'd like to. Please note, language is very important. BA in sports science is a degree um, that actually prepares you for a career within the world of sports and isn't South Africa a sports crazy country so for those of you who are interested in this this is a or who has been uh, offered a degree in this regard please note make sure that you meet those minimum requirements remember maths 60 or maths let 70 and make sure that you follow up regularly and if for some other reason you have changed subjects please inform the people so that they would know um, and then of course we're going to move to the world of the arts all the programs in the degree programs in the arts are selection programs and to and i mentioned to you that south africa is a sport crazy country but we are even more a culture crazy country we love the arts so let's kick off with our first one a ba in drama and theater studies 
This is a degree that prepares you for in front of the camera as well as behind. So whether you are going to be uh, on TV, on stage or backstage, doing whatever is needed to be done to see that our country and our arts can be um, appreciated by our whole country. And remember, even if we sing our national anthem at our sports games, that are our arts that are living in that space. Um, a BA in visual uh, arts is a degree that will prepare you within three streams. We have the fine arts, we have visual communication design, which you will know as people who are doing graphic design. And then of course, we've got jewelry design. So within the jewelry design, you can either, either be a designer or a manufacturer of jewelry design. And if you had an offer to do uh, your BA in visual arts, we are looking forward to see how you are going to grow within that. Then let's move to music. Music is the thing that makes the world go around. Um, we have a BA degree in music that combines training in music with the option of gaining expertise in something else like a language or social science. So if you would like to be a music teacher but you're not going to do a BMAS, then you do a BA in music and you combine it with any other subject that that's your interest. Uh, and then we have the BMAS. The BMAS offers you specialized training within your field of, of interest or skills in a music department. So you can either be a performing artist, you can still be a music teacher, you can be a musician, a researcher, composer, the world is your oyster. But remember, most of you had auditions and the theoretical tests, so please keep on practicing. And on that, our last uh, uh, offer um, some of you might have is also, remember music also offers a diploma or a higher certificate. So that's also something that you can inquire about. But now I am so thirsty, I'm going to take a water break and I'm going to hand over to Janine. Now you have listened and thank you Fiona for refreshing us with the choices that we made. So we are ready to embark now on this journey mm -hmm. um, in the arts, uh, the, the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences. So young people must take it upon themselves to ensure that they receive the highest education possible so that they can represent us well in future as future leaders. All of the best with your studies and we are ready to welcome you at the University of Stellenbosch. Make sure that you take all our contact details, our Dean's Office, Ms. Liesel van Kervel, and you will see all the details also on the, on the website. Thank you very much. And on that note, we say thank you, Danke, in Corsi. So the world is currently entering into what is generally termed the fourth industrial revolution and what this basically means is that more and more our workspaces, our social living spaces are becoming infiltrated with a greater variety of information and communication technologies. Um, this creates a new world in which we have to cope, in which we have to live and in which we have to work and it's changing the way the economy is set up dramatically. We need individuals with expertise in understanding these technologies on the one hand but also understanding the social systems in which they become embedded. And this includes organizations, but it also includes communities, uh, civil organizations, government, and everywhere where people come together and try to improve the state of living. So what we're trying to do at ISM, we're trying to equip students uh, with technical skills and also the appreciation of technology in society um, so that we can uh, solve societal and organizational problems. Uh, I chose information systems management because it gives me the ability to help many people. It gives me the ability to impact people's lives in a really positive manner. My choice for studying ISM honors is because I like how it bridges the gap between the theoretical side of things and the tech side of it. And with how it was structured my third year, um, it allowed us to have both exposures to both sides of the spectrum. Uh, I think for me, studying at Stellenbosch has been a really enjoyable experience. Um, it's a student town. I know that when I need to work on a group project, my friends are most likely to be living close by. I can walk to class with them in the morning. And coming from Gauteng, like it's quite quite a distance. All my lecturers are really passionate about what they do and it comes through in class um, 
and it's just been a really great place to be for the past three years. If you're someone who is interested in technology, but a day sitting in front of a computer, staring at a computer screen doesn't sound uh, enjoyable to you, perhaps something like information systems management is, is a good idea. Within the programs in information systems management, you'll be doing a number of different subjects. These subjects range from technical subjects, teaching you to really work with technology, subjects in the social sciences and understand how society operates, and also subjects in business to understand how business organizations work and how technology can advance their goals. When you leave this program, you'll be well equipped to enter the labor market during the fourth industrial revolution and take your career to the next level. Hi everyone, I'm Don LaRue from the Department of Information Science in the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences at Stellenbosch University and I want to share a couple of thoughts with you on studying informatics at Stellenbosch University. First up, it's important to understand that there are two routes that you can follow when you study informatics. The first is via the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences and in that route you follow the BA Humanities program with the subject Socio-Informatics throughout your first three years of study. But there's also a route via the Faculty of uh, Economic and Management Sciences and in that route you follow the BCO Management Sciences program with a focal area in Information Systems Management. Both of these routes lead to a three-year bachelor degree and you have then got the option to follow a fourth year program which is a single year Bachelor of Informatics Honours and both these routes flow through to that honours program. Okay, who should study informatics? I think it's important to understand that our programs are not necessarily well suited to a student that specializes or is interested in one particular subject but rather those that are inter interested and perform well in a range of subjects. Analytical skills and an interest in digital technology is obviously important. You will be spending a lot of time in front of computers. And our best students tend to be those that, while they are interested in math and science and perform well in those subjects, they also enjoy subjects in the languages and the arts. Informatics typically calls for the combination of these skill sets. There's a wide range of career options. The majority of our students work as IT business analysts or information systems designers. And these are professionals who design and plan software artifacts ranging from something as simple as a smartphone application to complex business platforms. Other graduates follow careers that are more focused on the front end or interface of digital applications. And this includes roles like user experience designers. And then some of our other students follow more technical career paths in software development or data science. And a great thing about, thing about studying informatics is you're not locked into a particular career path. There's a range of options that you can follow after you've completed your studies. For more information, please visit suinformatics.com for information on the programs and the different uh, criteria and all the detail you can find there. Thank you very much. So, are you into sports or looking to further yourself in the sports science community? Right here next to me, we have Dr. Candice Vermaak, who's here from the BA Sports Science Faculty. Welcome, Dr. Vermaak. Thank you. Tell me, why should prospective students actually consider this degree? Well, this degree, if you have a passion for sports or you are interested in sports or fitness or health and wellness, this is definitely the degree for you. With this degree, you would be able to help individuals in terms of weight loss or work with coaching teams in terms of strength and conditioning. It's really the world is your oyster. And at our faculty, we really strive to be a world class sports science department. I'm glad you mentioned that at our faculty we actually strive to be a world-class. So speaking about world-class, before they enter the world-class faculty, <laughs> what subjects do one need to excel in its school to actually be accepted for this program? It would be great if you have a focus on having a first language as well as a second language and then in terms of maths and sciences. Okay, and then also what kind of careers can one actually pursue after completing this specific degree? 
All right, there are a variety of careers that individuals can go into. When you finish your undergrad in sports science, you can go into personal training, the fitness industry, you can go into coaching, you can go work at schools in terms of providing sporting opportunities or coaching there at schools as well. After you finish your degree in sports science, you're also able to do to choose one of three honors degrees. So we have one in kinetics, high performance or performance sport, as well as biokinetics. So kinetics is where you will learn to work with children that are neurotypical as well as children with disabilities. So you will get an opportunity how to evaluate children as well as how to reduce, for example, non-communable diseases, weight loss, or just work on gross motor problems that these children might have. Then if we look at high performance, in this industry, you will work with some of the elite athletes or, being, or get trained into being able to work with elite athletes in terms of coaching, strength and conditioning, and fitness. With our third degree option, it's biokinetics. So here you will have an opportunity to go into rehabilitation, more specifically the final phase of rehabilitation, and you will be able to work with a wide variety of populations in terms of orthopedic injuries or neuro injuries, for example, spinal cord injury or stroke. And you'll also be able to work with children in this industry. And you could also focus on strength and conditioning, of course, of sports teams as well. So I don't know about you, but I'm already feeling a bit sporty, apart from the science part. <laughs> Dr. Also not my best subject. <laughs> <laughs> so apart from teaching, is there something else that you specialize in outside of your teaching field? Yes, I work specifically with people with disabilities, so that's my area of focus. And that's another drawing point for Stellenbosch University. We actually have three areas where students can specialize in in their final year. So one would be coaching, fitness specialization, and then disabilities, which was pioneered here at Stellenbosch. So if you think that you are fit enough to join the Stellenbosch University Sports Science Department, Please make sure that you get in contact with Dr. Vermark, Dr. Candice Vermark. It was an absolute pleasure having you today and I hope that students are a bit more informed now of what lies ahead. Thank you so, so much. Pleasure, thank you. So our next stop is with Ms. Yusan Finnamo, who is a junior lecturer at the B Social Work Department. Welcome. Thank you. So Ms. Yusan, tell me, why should prospective students actually study a B Social Work? Well, if you're interested in topics like human rights, social change, social justice, um, empowerment and the liberation of people, then social work offers you the opportunity to develop competencies, um, to engage these structures and people to bring about change and social development, but also beyond that. So upon graduating, um, you can be directly employed as a social worker, or you can use the social work degree as a foundation to go into many other career paths like psychology psychology, law, marketing, um, management, and just, the list just goes on. <laughs> <laughs> so before one gets to actually study or be social work, these, I believe, important subjects, whether or not, if there are, what subjects did you take it at school to actually study this degree? So we don't have specific requirements with regards to subjects. Um, just a 65, above 65% average, excluding life orientation is important. Um, but you can read more about that in the year book, of course. What is more important for us is that students that come to study social work um, have excellent verbal communication skills, like, like writing or good at writing. And of course, they have to love people. So they have to be adaptive, assertive, creative, um, and passionate about change. So this sounds to me like it's all personality based. Exactly. So what makes the SU social work program so unique? Tell me more about that. Okay, so our students um, from first right through to fourth year um, do practical work at field placements, which means social workers guide and supervise them both at these field placements, but also at the university. Um, so our students are in high demand because of this. Um, our practitioners out there view our students as excellent workers and strong and hardworking. So we haven't had any issues with regards to employment, which is obviously a bonus. Um, um, so our students are just, yeah, we, we focus more on um, also making sure that our students that leave um, the department are creative and overall unique, um, rounded persons, that they are thought leaders, um, but that they're also passionate about making change wherever they go. 
Okay, and in terms of careers, what, what careers can one follow after they graduate with the B-Social? So a social work degree leads to a professional qualification, mm -hmm. which means that our students register at our professional council, like mentioned, from second year onwards. Um, so these students can work, go, and you guys can go into any field of social work, so social development, um, healthcare setting, perhaps you're interested in um, disabilities, substance abuse, all of that is open to you. You can even register as a private practitioner or you can specialize further in going to forensic social work, school social work, um, maybe life coaching. So really yeah. a lot of opportunities. I can actually tell that Ms. Jassan Finnamore is quite passionate about the B-Social Work. So when coming to the issue to study a B-Social Work degree, please do not leave your personality behind. <laughs> no. And thank you so, so much for joining us today. It was an absolute pleasure. Thank you very much and good luck to all the students and thank you for stopping by while you're making all your decisions. Good luck with the journey ahead. Our next stop is with Professor Andries Fasahi. So, Prof, tell me, what language subjects can students actually choose from in this specific program? Yes, we have some language subjects and also culture subjects. Uh, the language subjects uh, range from uh, the ancient uh, languages like Biblical Hebrew, Greek, uh, Latin, right through to uh, contemporary Afrika uh, Afrikaans and English and also German, French and the African languages, of course. I heard you mentioned uh, something about language and culture as well. But how come is culture so important deel van this grad? Yeah, well, culture must be able to speak as you speak talen praat. As you can not study zonder om ook degelijk aandacht te gee aan cultuur. En dit is ook om ons dan vakke betrek soos filosofie en sielkunde en visuele kunste en so aan. Okay, want wat is kind so na cultuur en wat is taal so na cultuur? Ja, dit precies. <laughs> so bied hierdie graad iets dan aan vir studente wat in kreatieve werk belangstel? Ja, eh uh, daar is studente wat uh, draai maak bijvoorbeeld by Afrikaans en Nederlands waar ek betrokke is. En uh, vanaf die derde jaars vlak dan geef ons, gee ons vir hulle ook een bykie um, kennis en uh, maar maak hulle touwijs op die gebied van creatieve skrywerk. Um, Dion Meyer, die bekende internationale skrywer, het een draai gemaakt <laughs> by ons en Bibi Slippers wat bekend is vaar digbundel fotostaat misschien. Uh, en onlangs Ryan Pedro, wat uh, die In Ingrid Jonker prijs gekry het vir pink ceramic hoinkies. Hmm. <laughs> Dichtbundel. <laughs> <laughs> ja. uh, sy dichtbundel waarmee hy die Ingrid Jonker prijs gekry het. Hy, hy het op die die program gegaan. Kijk prof, ek stel ook nou automatisch onmiddellik belang in die program, maar sê vir my, what are the typical career paths that one can follow or graduates can follow? Yes, uh, many of our students uh, end up in education as teachers, a very big uh, section of uh, our student body end up in education, but also in uh, publishing companies, for instance. Uh, publishing companies need people who can do good proof, proofreading, uh, editorial work, and some of them even end up in the dip diplomatic core, especially those who go in for the international languages. Okay, so that that klink for me as of hierdie, hierdie program, soos rechtig waar baie groot veld het dan vir, vir gegradeerde studente, en het klink ook as of dit vir hulle excess gee om bykie meer te loop speel in die veld van kultuur en taal. Um, vertel vir ons bykie prof, Hoe het die pad vir prof voor en toe geloop, nadat prof ook gegradeer het, die by die universiteit? Ja, ek het maar Gebering uh, Stellenbosse toeristekantoor ek begin werk, okay. uh, waar ek die Frans sprekende, Duits sprekende toeriste gehelp het om door te verken. Ja. En toe het ek uh, vir die tijd lang as vertaler gewerk, uh, uit Duits en Frans. En toe het ek die voorrecht gehad om in Nederland te gaan studeer by die Universiteit van Utrecht. En toe het ek Nederlands goed onder die knie gekry. En sederdien is ek een akademikus. Wow, oké. Okay. Ah, prof, ek spreek is in eine kleine bijzendas. As, he? Ja. <laughs> Nie te sleeg nie, nee. <laughs> so, if you are interested in studying in the program of language and culture, remember what prof said, that there are many ways that you can actually access the big world out here. Hello, everyone. 
I'm Professor Fasti Ruit from the Department of Philosophy and I'm also the coordinator of the PPE program. PPE stands for Politics, Philosophy and Economics. These three subjects make up the core of the PPE program and you will explore them in depth during all three years of undergraduate study. While politics and philosophy are part of the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences, economics is part of the Faculty of Economic and Management Sciences. So this is a truly interdisciplinary program which equips you with a wide range of knowledge and skills. The PPE degree is an internationally recognized qualification. Stellenbosch University was the first in South Africa to offer this degree and it has become a highly sought after qualification among people with a wide range of interests. Over the past two decades, our students have gone on to careers in journalism, think tanks, investment banking, research institutes and the academic world. Some have started their own businesses, others have started non-profit organizations. Some are working for government, others are working for organizations that hold government to account. The PPE program develops your critical thinking skills and equips you with knowledge of political and economic systems. You also learn how to conduct social research, analyze economic trends, evaluate policies, and how to reason about controversial moral issues. If you are interested in the decisions that shape the world, and you enjoy asking the difficult questions that no one else dares to ask, then the PPE is for you. To be accepted into the PPE program, you need to have mathematics as a matric subject and to achieve at least 60% for mathematics on your school leaving certificate. It is also important to have good language skills, as you will be reading, writing and debating a lot. But most of all, you need to be curious about the world, both the world we live in and the one inside your own head. I hope I have whetted your appetite and I look forward to welcome you in, your, in the faculty in the near future. Thank you for joining me and safe travels to your next stop. So up next we have Dr. Lauren Monji, who is the program coordinator for the BA Humanities. Thank you for having me. All good. So please tell me, why should prospective students actually consider to study this program? Well, the BA Humanities degree is the most flexible program on offer in the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences in the sense that it has no compulsory subjects. This allows students to explore the wide variety of subjects on offer in our faculty and to find something that they're passionate about. Since most of the subjects on offer in our faculty are not presented in high school level, students are exposed to an exciting new variety of subjects that they can take as part of their degree program. Okay, so I take it that there's no specific subjects that students need to excel in at a high school level? Uh, it really depends on your subject choices because the faculty has a wide variety of subjects ranging from things like economics to philosophy to German and so much more. In general, we find that students that do well in their language related subjects in high school do well in the BA Humanities degree because so much of the assessment in this degree is written assessment. Okay, and in terms of the field, so what kind of careers can one follow after graduating with a degree of, of BA Humanities? Again, it really depends on your subject choices. Unlike some degrees like a B.Ed., the BA Humanities degree is not a vocational degree in the sense that you don't enter the degree knowing which career you'll end up working in. While that might sound daunting, it offers students the opportunity to get to know themselves, their interests and their strengths. Do you mind listing a bit of the subjects that one actually do get along with this? Uh, we have a wide variety of subjects that are related to language. So we have English, Afrikaans and Isikosa. We have German, we have French, we have Mandarin. And then we have a lot of social science subjects like philosophy, political science, psychology and social work. And also su subjects such as art and music. Um, hi, today I want to talk to you about the Bachelor of Data Science offered um, in the Department of Geography and Environmental Studies in the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences. And this is the geoinformatics focal area of this program that's been offered in the Data Science School. So we're going to chat about why you should study this, what subjects you need to excel at at school, and what potential careers you may follow. I also want to show you some excellent people that are in my team that do data science. Although data science is a new field, um, there are already many people that are not professionally trained, but have already been starting with this particular job. 
and especially in the spatial realm. So Harvard Business Review rated the data science as the sexiest job of the 21st century. Not only do we get lots of money, but there is also lots of opportunity of working with um, very interesting new data and projects. At the core of this um, sexy buzzword, there is um, machine learning, deep learning, artificial intelligence, and many of these core concepts that you learn in mathematics and statistics. But in our focus area, we also look at geography. So all industries use data. So in the modern day, children are joined to the hip by their cell phone, and we are communicating with space all the time. So we are constantly connected and we are creating lots and lots of big data. And in the data science science program, one learns how to work with big data. So all of this connectedness helps businesses of many natures to make decisions. And you know that you use Mr. Google quite a lot. So therefore, there are a lot of um, applications within the geospatial realm that we can deal with. So the interconnectedness um, it affects all kinds of businesses. And this has led us to the um, fourth industrial revolution where connectivity and big data drive all kinds of processes. So this is also the same with uh, the geospatial industry and geospatial information has been used in many areas. Here you can see the very famous John Hopkins dashboard where we could see the spread of the COVID disease. We also use it to look at living standards, um, how poverty divides our communities, and how we affect nature through pollution, um, land degradation, and the plastic in the sea. And not to talk about land, climate change. So all of these things are modeled with through data scientists using geolocation data. Geolocation data um, are generated very frequently by satellite imagery. Um, satellites are hovering over the earth and there are thousands of them out there filling up the sky. All of that big data is collected and can be processed by data scientists who have a geoinformatics bent. We want to know what is where. These kind of data scientists need to then understand why it is there and then mostly ask what, why should we care and what can we do about it? So what kind of person do we need to be able to do this job? Most of you will think that a data scientist is just sitting in front of his screen coding, but a proper data scientist is a little bit of a combination between a hacker, an analyst, um, somebody who can communicate really well and someone that the client can trust somebody with integrity that you know that whatever has been done to your data is actually correct and will answer the problem that you are trying to solve. So what do you need to be good at at school? Uh, number one is maths. Um, number two um, is physics. And those two are essential for you to be able to get into a science program at Stellenbosch University. For maths, and for your general national senior certificate, you need to get in excess of 80%, which is quite a tall order. But then you also need computer science that makes you drive the code and you need geography to give you the background knowledge. So that is the domain or business knowledge that is needed by a data scientist. So there are many different careers that you can follow. Um, and as the technology changes, so the job will change. Their job may involve gathering data and presenting it in reports or maps, and they use a combination of computer and mathematical skills to develop applications and programs that can gather and analyze geospatial data. So you build the program, such as TerraClim, which is a uh, so software empowering long and short term decision making in the wine industry. So here we have people that are involved in collecting geospatial data, interpolating surfaces, putting layers together and providing farmers with the necessary information to make decisions. We can also uh, generate location-based geospatial solutions. Um, at a company, for example, GeoInt, they provide services for um, transport systems. 
So these digital skills um, enhance um, and commercialize spatial data so that people can actually use it to make decisions. Then this is a, a water a productivity website where the data um, that you see on the screen reflects how much biomass has been generated in Africa. So satellite imagery were processed over long periods of time through um, structured models and scientific processes to find out um, what is growing where and when it's going well in a specific area. We can also, from the same website, by using some of the functionality, extract how much water is being used. And we all know that water is a very scarce commodity and we would like to process um, information to be able to um, access better water all over Africa. So here I show you some of the people that are involved. Um, you may not have heard all of them, but uh, in the middle at the bottom you see Professor Adrian van Niekerk who is involved with GeoSmart, a technology company that is enabling um, spatial data um, for um, agricultural industries. And uh, on the top row are a team of people who I have interviewed and I hope that you can also hear what they've got to say about data science. So thank you very much for taking time out on your journey through the Smarties 101. And I hope that you've learned something about how spatial data can enable uh, us to understand better how we can manage the environment and socio-ecological systems. Hi, my name is Kaylee Higgs and I studied Geoinformatics at Stellenbosch University. Hi everyone, I'm James. I studied my undergrad and honours degree in Geoinformatics at Stellenbosch University. Hi, my name is Zani and I study Geoinformatics at Stellenbosch University. Hi, my name is Jean Duplessis and I am currently completing my master's degree in Geoinformatics at Stellenbosch University in the Department of Geography and Environmental Studies. Quite honestly, the reason why I studied geoinformatics was because I enjoyed geography at school, but I didn't want to study geology. So the only thing left was geoinformatics. But I, I quickly started to enjoy my degree, and especially in my third year and honours year, uh, since it was very practical. The reason I decided to study geoinformatics was because it combined a lot of my favourite things, like computer science problem solving, mathematics and geography, and it combined it in a very interesting and applicable way. But geoinformatics, I think, interests me as it uses um, modern technology and trends to make analysis about the Earth's surface, and um, it helps many different sectors from um, economists to farming and um, it's just so broad and you can really um, apply yourself in all sectors which is so great. I started studying geoinformatics because I wanted to get into a course that has a bit to deal with software development um, and also gives it like an interesting spin. So the geoinformatics department was a no-brainer to me. Um, geoinformatics itself is a very applied field um, and the, the the applications of it are so varied that you can't sum it up into one sentence. Um, what I can tell you however is that it allows you to expand your skill sets in various different ways uh, such as going into the data sciences or going into the geospatial realms or even normal software development and as a result of that I've had the opportunities to build up experience as a software developer as a web developer and at the moment as a earth observation and data scientist. After studies, I now work at the Centre for Geographical Analysis and we do a lot of spatial analysis, data science and scripting. And it really involves interesting topics such as agriculture, water resource management. Um, we did a project with human geography, um, I think it was last week. Uh, so it really is a very dynamic field and it has so many interesting applications. So uh, your job really depends on where your interests lie. Yeah, and the current work that I am doing now or learning about, I guess, because you never stop learning with geoinformatics, is um, more on the data science kind of side where we're doing a lot of database um, manipulations. And But I am also involved with lots of like map making and that kind of um, work. My main role is to use weather station data to create interpolated uh, temperature surfaces 
Um, these surfaces are then used as input to biochematic models, um, which highlight seasonal temperature changes and thereby allow farmers to make more informed decisions. I really enjoyed my degree and I'd highly recommend it to anyone that enjoys uh, data and especially spatial data. Thanks everyone. The field isn't very vast, it's not very big. Um, so we need as many people as we can get to help us expand on the knowledge that we, we are currently trying to expand upon. Um, tackling issues such as global population, tracking and management, um, environmental issues, etc. Thank you. So student support is actually one of the most important stops that you will be making on your journey through the BA world. And today, from student support, we have Cheryl Richardson, who is an admin officer at the Center for Student Admin. Welcome, Cheryl. Thank you. So let's begin. When will I be able to register? Registration will happen in January, but the final dates haven't been set, but the information will be uploaded on the martins.com website as soon as everything has been finalized. Okay, so is there someone who will be able to assist in terms of e-registration, seeing that we don't have that physical contact going on at the moment? Yes, we do. You can contact our contact and client service center. You can contact them via email or telephonically, and there's always someone on the other end that will explain the whole process for you. I think that just makes everything a little bit more easier. And finally, Cheryl, if one makes a mistake, on its registration and or needs advice in terms of modules or what to choose from, is there a person that they can contact? Yes, you're more than welcome to contact one of our faculty officers in the Administration A building. You can make an appointment to see us and we'll explain the whole process, how the program is structured and which modules goes with which modules and things like that. So is there a certain time or office hours that you guys are available, is it? Yeah, we are available from 8 a.m. until 4.30 in the afternoon. And you just make a booking and then we can um, sort you out. Sarah, can you please, before you go, just leave us the important numbers or websites that one can visit for student support? All right, so www.martis.com is for all the information with regards to registration and our contact details. Then if you want to call our contact and client service center, it's 021-808-9111. And uh, you can also email them on info at sun.ac.za. So when coming to the University of Stellenbosch, I think one of the most important things is residency. So today with me, we have Mr. Garrett Cornelison, who is the Deputy Director of the Center for Student Communities, also known as the CSC. Welcome, sir. Thank you. So please tell me, how do I determine which residence I will be placed in? So when you apply to the university, you will have a section where you can apply for a specific residences. You can have three options that you indicate on your application form, but you are not guaranteed uh, the specific choice that you filled in on that form so when not, you apply. Do first years coming into uh, res get academic and mentor support? Yes, they do. Um, each residence has got a mentor system and that mentor is responsible for both academic and social integration within the university during the newcomers year as a first year. Okay. And then also, just as a question, can I choose to be placed in a room with my friend or how does it work? No, as a, as a, as a newcomer first year, no, you cannot do that. Um, the university or what, within the residences, there is a certain set of criteria that you use to place roommates together. And I know as an alumni myself, culture is something that is very, very important, especially at residences. So what is the residence culture like and what kind of activities can a first year participate in at RES? Yeah. So we obviously are, are very strong on cultural front and on sport front within our residence and there's still a big focus on that. But the residence space is no longer just a place where you had a bed and where you stayed after the classroom. We also place a big emphasis on the co-curriculum and the structures that we put in place there and students are encouraged to partake in that co-curricular program. And maybe I can also mention that at Stellenbosch University, part participation in the co-curriculum is formally recognized on the academic transcript. Yes. And I also think that it helps you to engage with others in your areas as well and actually getting to know 
others that you see a community word. So that's correct. And community is the key word because we, we believe in, in, in creating communities and fostering communities. And we don't only do it in the resident space. We also do it within a cluster space. And the cluster space is where we group residences together as well as students that stays in our private student organization wards. Other um, resident universities call it day students or commuter students. We call it PSOs. PSOs. No wonder it's called the Center for Student Communities. And then also, our residencies are, is a residence quite a diverse space? Yes, we, we don't have only students from the Western Cape. We don't only have Afrikaans speaking students. So students from different language backgrounds, from different parts of the country, but even from within Africa and internationally, we have students. So yes, a diverse space indeed. Okay, and then tell me a bit, how is residencies managed uh, in terms of complaints and where do I go to or how do I go about when I have complaints at a residence? So each, each residence has got a residence head. Um, they are assisted by a house committee. The house committee is headed up by a prim or a head student, as you might want to call it, and a vice prim or a deputy head student. We also believe that the leadership is part of creating um, your potential as a, as a leader. Um, they are responsible for the day-to-day -day operations with the residents aid providing strategic input. So that is how we deal with it on on a managerial level within the resident space. So I hope you guys are still having a lot of fun on this journey. Up next, we welcome Ms. Natalie Sadi. Thank you for having me. Not a problem, welcome. So can you please tell me what is the role uh, of the Centre for Student Counselling and Development. It's important to note that the Centre for Student Counselling and Development consists of four units. And in terms of the four units, I work at the Unit for Academic Counselling and Support, where I mostly support students in the Extended Degree Programme. We offer at my unit, we focus a lot on work sessions, um, therapy, academic consultations and psychometric assessments. Okay. And what kind of academic support can I get while I'm studying at the university? So academic support consists of um, academic counselling sessions, such as sessions on exam strategies, exam preparation, study preferences. And we also do career guidance and therapeutic support. So what type of support is available for first generation students and EDP students in general, and particularly during the pandemic? During the pandemic, we moved to virtual sessions as well as in-person sessions. We wish we could have done a little bit more in-person sessions. Mm -hmm. And we focus a lot on um, support within the CACD as well as within the faculties and support is also available from administrative staff and liaison is um, available with faculty support officers. Okay, and as a parent, are you able to connect with the university to understand how to support your child? Parents can connect with staff, although it is recommended that students pose most of their questions to us themselves. At the CCD, we focus um, on confidential sessions and we, we honour that. But we do also recognise if students are at risk to themselves or others, that we do connect with parents and lecturers. I also think it is quite important. And then furthermore, most students uh, pay to make use of the CCD, CCSD service or must students pay to actually make use of the uh, service that you guys provide at the CSCD? Not at all. So our services are free and confidential, except some of our psychometric assessments, but we do make use of bursaries. Um, and if bursaries are not able to pay, we also do pro bono assessments from time to time. Okay. And then um, should students speak to their lecturers when they are struggling or can they go directly to you? My opinion is that students should contact their tutors or lecturers for content specific support and more general academic strategies can be done with us or emotional support. If you're not sure what type of support you require, we can discuss that during and assess that during the intake interview. Okay, quite interesting. And then also many students struggle quite a lot in silence. And what if a student is too scared to talk about their stumbling blocks? 
What advice would you give a student in that case? Great question. Um, I believe that struggling in silence is isolating and it's also not sustainable at all healthy. Um, I would tell students if you're struggling to consider talking to those around you. If you just start the conversation, you'll tap into your inner resilience. And um, I also believe that if you start that conversation, you'll be surprised to realize how many students are in exactly the same situation as you. So talk and listen earlier than later. It is impossible to study without support along the way, be it with regards to acquiring study skills or language support that will help you to succeed in your studies, extending your study duration to give you the best possible chance to successfully complete your degree, cope with stress or access services we provide to help students with disabilities navigate this world. We know that there are many students with disabilities, whether it be physical or mental, who want to study in the arts faculty. The faculty has modules spread amongst a few buildings. These buildings are mainly the arts building, drama, the old main building and the Kratua building. Amongst others, the Adam Small Theatre is currently being upgraded to include a lift. The Nielsi, which is much like a strip mall with a range of shops and restaurants, has a lift and you will be able to access the library and some residences that has some lifts. Some of our hubs and residences are only accessible up to the first floor. However, the upgrading of buildings and walkways are a constant project in SU, given that we are over a hundred years old with buildings that were built not taking into account students in wheelchairs. If you have a challenge with mobility, you can speak to your lecturer, tutor, staff in the environment where you find inaccessible spaces. All spaces on campus are overseen by various facility management staff. While some of the buildings I mentioned have at least one lift that allows you accessibility to the first level, some students in a wheelchair will have to sit at the back of the class when attending the class. This is not ideal, but it is so due to structure of some buildings. Where there is an inaccessible area, please bring this to the attention of the relevant lecturer who will communicate with the maintenance and facilities person in the faculty. What if a student prefers to read using software that will read back to them, where they can write using speech to text technologies, particularly in text based information? Who can they speak to about assisting with accessible texts? They can make contact with the resource office of the disability unit at braille at sun.ac.za to discuss accessible texts and technologies. The support you had at school or at another university is not transferable to SU. However, you could use the reports that you had at school or another institution as collateral in your new application for concessions. There are three forms to complete that must be submitted to skryfdate at sun.ac.za for these concessions. The forms are obtainable under the test and examinations section of the website. The three application forms can also be found by going to the address at the bottom of the screen. If you need to speak about your disability or specific learning needs, you are more than welcome to make an appointment by emailing disability at sun.ac.za to have a confidential discussion with one of the staff at the disability unit. Any disability or concern you have can be discussed with the unit. So, for example, if you need help with a physical, neurodevelopmental, sensory, specific learning disability, or even if you are not sure what your disability needs are, do speak to the disability unit. They can always direct you in another direction should they not be able to assist you. If you're wondering, if there are any developmental workshops that you can attend, check out the Lead with Disability curriculum. It is an accredited workshop. You might also need help with time management or study skills. In that case, consult the unit's website below, where you will find a few programs to, that you can be part of, as well as further frequently asked questions.
Dear prospective students, thank you for taking this journey with us and allowing us to provide you with more information on preparing to register for a degree in our faculty. We look forward to welcoming you to the BA world next year. So from my side, Jurgen Romario McEwen, as a part of the SU alumni, goodbye to it seems, Ndiabulela.